Hey, what's up? Welcome back to Travel Tech. So I know you've been looking for that perfect Android car system for your car, which has all the bells and features and also comes at an affordable price. So in this video, I'll be showing you my detailed review, the complete guide to the Woodman Robo X9 Android car studio system. Well, just giving you a quick features about this. This Android system has a 4G SIM enabled, which means you have internet on the go. It has one of the best displays available on a car system. It has got wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. It has got voice control and much, much more. So if you are interested in purchasing and getting to know in detail about this system, you have arrived at the right video. So let's jump ahead and take a quick look at one of the finest car systems which I have used and still currently using in my car. Let's get started. So here is the box pack of the Woodman Robo X9 car stereo system and I must say they have really upgraded their packaging and they have really upgraded the way they appeal to their customers. Now there's a new Woodman logo on top and at the bottom it says India Ka Apna Brand. The Woodman logo here and the Luke's Premium Car Audio logo at the right bottom corner. What else is inside the box? Let's take a look. So here on one side they have specified certain details. Now this is an Android car system. It supports wireless Apple CarPlay and of course I think wireless Android Auto as well. It is voice enabled so you can control the device using your voice. It has DSP surround sound. It has 5 GHz Wi-Fi which is excellent. So YouTube, it comes within the Android system and of course you have access to Play Store so you can install any of the Android apps. And also one of the most productive features is that it supports a 4G SIM. On the other side, there's nothing else written and here they have specified that Woodman is an Indian audio brand dealing in audio systems for the past 20 years. There's a sticker here which gives some details and it says this is a Woodman Robo X9 lag free Android Studio and it has got two year warranty it says on this. The car name is WRV because my car is currently a WRV and the MRP given on this is 40,000 rupees but you're going to get it at almost half of the original price given here. So all these things all these small things are minor improvements which Woodman has done uh, along with improving their logo they are really appealing to a large group of people now and they are taking their company big so this is a very nice box packaging so let's open up the box pack and see what are the contents inside so as soon as you open up the box you have this screen guard or screen protector you can say and it has got a uh, dry and wet wipes along with the screen guard so let's keep this aside here so here is the main system the woodman robo x9 android car stereo system let's go ahead and open it up take it out of the package so here you go this is a system and at front at the bottom of the display you have this really good looking woodman logo now they really improved upon the branding of their uh, android systems and there is a screen protector provided and if i remove that all these bubbles will go away so let me just keep it like this for a while so that there is no dust or dirt coming on top of the display for the time being taking a look at the back of the unit guys so here are some important points so it has got attachment screws here so this is going to attach to the particular frame for which you order and there are some ports provided including the main power port there is a fuse here on the left side of the box here it's written as robo x9 2 by 32 which is 2 gb ram and 32 gb internal at the bottom you can see here is a slot for the sim card so this is where the sim card plugs in along with that there is a 5 gigahertz wi-fi network adapter there is a gps adapter and a 4G plus adapter and at the other side there is a Woodman branding provided. So let's keep the unit aside and take a look at what else is given inside the box. I'll just keep the unit right here on top of the screen guard. So guys here is the complete wire kit provided along with the unit. On top it provides the customer ID and here they have provided the total wire quantity as 9 pieces. So keeping this aside let's dive down and take a look what else is inside the box. So they said please read this carefully. So do not press the camera lens during installation. Please inform to installation person. Pressing the lens will damage the camera. Woodman will not be able to replace the same. So they have provided a warning here so that nobody presses on the camera. It might cause some damage to the camera. So here is the reverse camera guys along with its connector cable. And uh, here is a hole saw in order to cut a hole into your rear bumper so that it can accommodate the rear camera. So everything is provided within the box. You do not have to purchase any of the wire kits separately. So these are things which are going to get inside the box. The main Robo X9 unit, its connector cables, a free screen guard and a free rear camera along with its connector cables as well. 
So let's take a look at the technical specifications of the Woodman Robo X9 Android system. It has an octa-core ARM Cortex A55 processor with a processing speed of 1.6 GHz. It has got a 2 GB DDR4 RAM and a 32 GB internal memory. It runs on Android 10 operating system and the screen display has a resolution of 1280 into 720p. That is a high definition resolution and it is a LED display. It has got a 4 speaker output of 60 watts with a DSP Pro of 36 equalizers. And in terms of network connectivity, it has got a 4G SIM slot along with a 5 GHz Wi-Fi network. It has got wireless Apple CarPlay and a wireless Android Auto. Along with it, it also has 36 plus smart voice commands. Woodman also offers a 15-day replacement policy along with a 2-year warranty. So this is the first look of the Woodman Robo X9 unit and I have now installed it in my car and after using it for all these days, I think this is a really excellent device to use in your car. So first of all, let's start up with showing you the home launcher. So this is an Agama car launcher and I personally prefer this launcher because this suits any car interface and it provides you all the information which you need and the entire home screen is customizable which means you can change any of the options which are currently being displayed right here. So starting with the center console as you can see this is a compass in the middle so if you just want to change it you can just click on that and you have so many other options you can either display the logo of your car or if you don't want the logo you want the navigation to show up in the middle you have the navigation option following this you have the compass as shown before then you also have a music player which will display the thumbnail of the current song being played by the music player Following that you have the speedometer so once the GPS connects now since my car is currently standing under a building the unit is not able to catch GPS but once I go out into the open road the GPS signal will catch and it is going to show you the live speed in the middle of the console. And lastly you have a clock right here well you won't be needing it because you already have a digital clock on top but if you are someone who prefers an analog clock and the date and day being displayed you also have that in the center console. Now here on top you can see the 4G logo and this system supports dual SIM which means you can have two SIMs together and you won't be running out of network. So this is the GPS logo and now it is currently showing as 3. So this means 3 satellites are currently caught on GPS. So this is the current temperature and here is the voice control. Following that the auto brightness setting finally the settings of the system. You have certain other options such as radio, navigation, music phone internet and apps all of these are customizable and you can change it to any other app and you can change the names of those buttons as well so what i personally liked about this agama car launcher is once you head into the settings so as you can see there are three options in the design menu and uh, let me just go ahead and zoom in to show you more better so this is so these are the three options the theme editor theme presets and theme editor options now this is the one which i like personally the theme presets option this presents you with the preset theme and you can choose any among those what you can do is just click on any of the themes which i have provided right here so for example this is our black ag so if i just click on that the theme of the device changes and now it is full black with the orange colored buttons and orange color dash as you can see the second clock is being ticked by the orange color here also there is a next option called the red carbon now this converts the system into red and black following this you have the green light again this is the brown luxury option following this you have the material contrast then elegant so i use this at night and lastly here is the good day option which was shown initially so you can select any of these presets so let's head on to the black ag and just click on the apply button so here you go the black preset is now applied and it shows up the home screen in that particular preset now i really like this because this interface this agama car launcher interface on the woodman robo x9 gives you a really professional feel makes you feel like this was provided by the oem by the car company and this is not a third party installation also guys talking about the form factor and the finish so as you can see the frame was provided by Woodman and if you can see there is no difference between the frame which was originally present by Honda company and the one which the Woodman has provided. There is no gap or improper fixation. The frame is perfect fit for my car and of course it will be a perfect fit for any of the car for which you are going to order and this frame doesn't look like it is a third party frame this looks oem this looks as if it has come from the company following this i need to tell you some really useful features which woodman has now implemented in this woodman robo x9 and one of the important features is the voice control so if i just click on the voice control navigate to bangalore so as you can see the google assistant works flawlessly well you just have to give it a voice command and the 4g connection built in make sure that you are connected to the internet and the maps open up automatically and everything happens by itself you don't have to do anything currently it has already opened up google maps and 
finding the best route and there you go the maps navigation has opened up and it is currently navigating to bangalore so i didn't touch the unit at all i just clicked on the voice control button and asked the google assistant to do the particular job and it's done really well also the processing is pretty fast for a car system and currently by far based on what i have seen this is one of the fastest responding units in the car systems so let's head back onto the home screen and uh, show you some of the other interesting things. So one of the most interesting and one of the most user friendly or should I say convenient features which Woodman has now provided is there is a scroll down bar at top. So as you can see once you scroll down there are certain options now provided and they are easily accessible by anyone. So let me just go ahead and zoom in. So there is a Wi-Fi option if you want the unit to connect to Wi-Fi. So there is a specific eye comfort mode, which means at evenings, if you click on this, it will give a yellow tint on the screen. Your eyes won't get strained much while looking at the system at night. If you want, you can disable that. Following this, you have the data option, which is a 4G SIM option. So as you can see, I have enabled the data. This airplane mode, if you want to remove all connections, there's an off screen button. Now this is really important because while driving at night, the system display might be a bit distracted. So if you want to turn off the screen, just click on that and the whole screen turns off. If you want to turn it on, just tap on the display and the display comes back on. So that's it. And along with that, there is a clean memory option. So if you want multiple apps running on the unit, you can first clean memory and do that. Then following that, there is a standby option and there is a reboot option given right here. If you drag down the menu a bit more, there is a brightness bar right here. So you just have to scroll all the way to the forward for the maximum brightness and scroll all the way down for the brightness. There is also a scissor mark right here. This is a screenshot option. So if you click on that, the unit is going to take a screenshot of the current display, which is being shown on the unit. As you can see, here is the current screenshot and now you can save the screenshot or you can take a long screenshot or you can cancel completely. You can also crop the screenshot based on your requirement. So I'll just click on the cancel button. Following this, you have the settings, Android settings option right on top. So this is the Android settings menu and on top you have the wireless LAN. So if you click on wireless LAN, you can enable or disable the LAN or connect it. You have the data usage option. So this monitors the data. So currently, as you can see, it shows as 688 MB has been used. So I'll just head back. Then following that, there is a SIM info. So currently I have inserted only one SIM, which is an ATL SIM, but this supports dual SIM. So as you can see, there is a SIM slot one and a SIM slot two option. Following this, there is a hotspot and tethering option, which can, which means you can create a hotspot out of this unit. There is an airplane mode and a VPN mode. Following this, let's head down to the device settings. So here is a display option. If you click on the display, there is a brightness level, which you can adjust separately for day and night. So as you can see, the brightness light is set at maximum for 100 and the brightness night is set at zero. So you can do that. There's a wallpaper option, then an auto black screen option. So auto black screen means basically turn off the screen after the certain amount of time has passed. So you can select it to never and starting from 30 seconds up to 30 minutes, you can select that. There is also a display net switch option. So if you just click on that, it is going to show you the current internet speed, that current 4G speed. Now this is really useful because someone who wants to know if the current internet connection is working or not, you will get a net speed monitor on top of the notification bar. That's also a very convenient feature. Following this, you have the sound options. If you click on the sound option, there is a keypad tone option. If you turn it on, so as you can see, it gives a specific keypad tone whenever you touch any screen option, but currently I have disabled it. So let's keep it at disabled. So you can turn on the video loudness or turn it off. There is an amp option. There is a power conditioning option. There are options for subwoofer levels. If you have attached a subwoofer, there is an equalizer present. So you have the equalizer option. There is a field. You can select which area of the car you want the audio to concentrate. And then you have the surround sound option, the stereo sound enhancement, the bass enhancement and sound filter. Many audio options are present for those who are into such stuff. Then you have the speed compensated volume. So you can vary the sound based on the speed. So currently I have set it at off. So these are many of the options present in the sound segment. Following this, you have the GPS option. You have both the GPS and the GLONASS and it shows the longitude and latitude position, GPS status, number of GPS positioning satellites, GLONASS satellite quality, the time and the auto sync. So you have mode one and mode two in order to enable the GPS. Following that, you have the storage option. So let's head down into the storage section. So as you can see, it shows 11.83 GB used out of 32 GB and currently close to 12 GB has been used. So there is a store manager which you can enable or disable. In this, you have option to remove photos and videos which are over 90 days old. So many of the options are really good and they are very convenient for the usage. Following this, you have the apps option. So if you head into the apps, it is going to show you the list of all the apps which are installed into the unit. 
So following this you have the USB video output setting and USB device start. Following this the into the general settings press any key to start option is present and then just turned it on. Auto start navigation this means the navigation is going to start automatically as soon as you turn on the car or turn on the device. There is OSD time, mirror view on reverse image, mute audio when reversing. Now you can turn it off or you can turn it on. Now currently I have set it off and sound reduction when reversing. Now this is also a very useful option. Whenever you put on the reverse gear, the sound will automatically reduce down to the level which you have set or you can completely turn it off based on your control. There is a backlight control, default volume switch, default boot volume, GPS mix, sound mixing scale, lantern settings, steering wheel settings is basically where you can set the steering wheel buttons to work with the system. So all of the steering wheel buttons do work with this and that's also a really cool thing. So default Navi app, you can select either the maps or you can select any of the other apps if you want, if you have downloaded any of the other navigation maps, then you can also map data copy. So you can copy any of the map data which might have been provided. There are factory settings for which you need a specific password. Following that you have a user settings where you can alter the location settings. So as you can see here is the location, now currently it is turned on. Following this you have the security option where you can enable any of the find my device option. You have the Google Play protect option or the SIM card lock option and such options as such. Following this you have the language and input where you can add any extra keyboard if you want and certain options which are related to the language and input. Then you have the Google settings, you have the backup and reset for the system. Then you have the account where you can log in or log out from your specific Google account. Lastly guys, into the system settings, you have the date and time option. You can change the date and time. You have the accessibility option. You have the developer options as well. Again, this too needs a specific password. Then you have the about device option. So currently, as you can see, this is a very important section and I need you guys to see this. So this is the Android 10 version and the CPU is an octa-core 1.6 gigahertz at 2 GB memory plus 32 GB storage. In the system info, as you can see, it is a 1280 into 720p display. Following this, you have the device info option, which provides you with the IMEI number of the SIM cards inserted. So these are the Android settings provided. And now if you head into the app section of the unit, so as you can see, here is the Agama car launcher. Then you have an aux connection. There is a dedicated app store for the unit itself. From this app store, you can install any of the themes or home screens which you require. You have subsections at the bottom for themes and system apps. So if you click on the system, it just shows you the system apps which need to be updated. And if you click on the theme, it shows you a list of the themes which you can download and install in your car unit. There is a Google Assistant option, the Bluetooth option. The CPU-Z app is the one which I have installed. You have a calculator and you have a CarLink 2.0 for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now this unit supports wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. There is a CarBit Link app also installed. You have Google Chrome for browsing the internet. You have Disney Plus Hotstar if you want to watch movies. You have an equalizer and then you have the file manager, gallery, Gmail app, the Google app, Google Maps. You have a default music player. You have a default navigation. If you just click on that, it goes into the Google Maps because we have selected Google Maps as the default navigation. Following this, you have Netflix. You have an operation guide. There is Google Play Store. You can install any of the Android apps into the system. Then you have the Amazon Prime Video. You have a radio. Following this, you have the Android settings. You have Spotify for music. You have Topol Voice, Topol Plus, Touch Assistant, Vehicle Settings, Stock Video Player, Voice Search, and YouTube. And if I just click on YouTube, as you can see, YouTube opens up instantly. You have an instant connection via a 4G network and you can play videos while on the go if your data plan supports it. So this was the overview, a simple overview of the Woodman Robo X9 unit. And I think the display is very crisp and vibrant and the color level is pretty much very accurate. You have touch capacitive buttons here on the left. You have the volume down, volume up, back button, home button and the power button. Following this, you also have a mic slot and a reset slot right here on the left corner of the screen. So now let's take a look at some of the voice control features of the Woodman Robo X9. So there is a Robo logo right here. You can actually drag it around the screen and place it wherever you want. So currently, let me just place it right here. So this Robo mascot being shown on the screen shows that the voice control commands are activated and you can give voice commands in order to control the unit. So which are those specific voice commands and what are the various different things which you can do? Well, I'll just go ahead and show you that. So if I just head into the app section, and just scroll down so as you can see there is a topal plus voice app here so if i just click on that so here are all the detailed voice control options which are given right here and they are divided into subsections such as help section music control you can get a radio control navigation control incoming call control 
video control and system control so i'll just show you some of the commands which can be used actually so here as you can see the robo mascot is already up and running on the screen so there is a music control option and if i just click down on the sub menu it gives you a list of all the voice commands which you can use in order to control the music for example i'll just say play online music so it automatically opens the default music app which i have selected in this case it is a spotify so as soon as i gave that command it opened up the default music app and if i say close online music so now it's back onto the home screen and i never had to touch the system in order to control any of the settings now i'll just head back onto the topol plus voice app so this was the specific voice command and you can also say these particular commands in order to control the music such as pause close and the previous next and resume and pause music so you can say all of these and of course following this you have the radio control option so if i say open radio it automatically detects my voice and uh, close radio and now it just close the radio since i gave the particular voice command so let's head down and uh, see some of the navigation control options so it contains both open and close so i'll just try this again open navigation so it automatically opened up the navigation as soon as i gave the voice command and if i say close navigation so now it's closed the navigation and it's back onto the home screen so following this let's take a look at some of the other voice commands so you have the incoming call control you can either answer or reject the calls with just your voice and you never had to touch the screen there is a video control option so this will open the default video player and of course you can also open youtube so as you can just see it opened up the youtube app just based on my voice command and this is something really convenient close youtube and now it's closed youtube and back onto the home screen following this there are some other system control options again there is a long list of options right here so you can say turn on wifi so you get a small notification at the bottom of the screen and if i just try to confirm it so as you can see the wifi button is now lit this means that the wifi is enabled and if i say turn off wifi now again there is a small notification at the bottom and if i scroll down as you can see the wifi logo is now turned off mute volume so now i just muted the volume and you get the volume bar on top showing that it has muted unmute volume so the volume is unmuted and the volume is now back to its original setting that was 12 turn off screen now this is one very useful feature because while on the move if you want to turn off the screen at any particular time especially at night you can just say it out loud and the system will recognize it and turn it off and if you want it back on turn on screen as you can see the system just turned it on back by itself following this you have the next option which is volume up volume up volume up So if you keep saying this the volume keeps increasing by a margin of 3 and if you say volume down volume down volume down so as i just saw the volume again started getting down by a number of 3 you can control it using the voice control so open bluetooth so the bluetooth settings has opened up now close bluetooth and the bluetooth settings have closed based on the voice command following this you have open settings so the general android settings have opened up close settings and the settings is closed and the app is back onto the home screen there are about 36 voice control commands which you can use so these were the basic voice commands you also have the standard pack wherein you have some specific options in controlling your phone your music your apps and also the frequency of the radio For example you can call a certain number just by saying out their name and this is a particular voice command which has been given and in the music section you can also play a particular song play a particular artist you can also do that and in terms of app you can also open or close a specific app and in terms of the radio frequency you can say you have to tune into a certain frequency or to listen to 
radio of a certain frequency so all these uh, voice control commands are present in the standard pack feature so all these features are available these voice control features are available for you and this is one important feature which differentiates or separates the woodman robo x9 with the x9 unit so if you head into the about section this shows the topol voice plus app version so this is version 3.2.9 and this this is a standard version with a forever license and the network currently states as connected because this is a 4g sim enabled android car system following this guys i need to show you one more thing and if we just head into the topol voice app so as you can see it shows that the voice activation is activated and the language management is english india so if you click on that there is no other language particularly available and it's only the indian english language is available and the wake up word is hey top so in case if you find difficulty in opening the voice control you can just say hey top and as you can see the voice control command just opens up and you get a sub menu on the side and if you just click on any of these menu you also get specific voice commands which you can see on the screen and tell to the android car stereo system just in case if you have forgotten also you can select the default navigation app and the default music app so currently i have selected the google maps and default music app as spotify there is also a speaker option where you can select the voice with which the system responds back so it has two voices a male and a female voice they have also given names to it the male voice is rishi and female voice is sangeeta following this you also have an option to enable or disable this floating icon so this particular robo icon can be disabled if i just click on the disable button so as you can see the robo icon just went away and if i enable it back again the robo icon is back you also have a help floating icon if you enable that it opens up a small window next to the robo and it gives you all the voice control options just in case if you have forgotten what to say you can actually see it on the screen and based on these options you can say any particular voice command for the robo following this you also have a wake up and a log feature then you have the device info so this provides the version number and the build number and lastly you have the about section wherein you have the user agreement and user experience improvement program also guys along with this i wanted to show you one important feature and that is you have to install this fake device test app in your android car system and if i just head into the apps so as you can see there is a fake device test app you can actually download and install it from the google play store so this says it exposes device being sold with fake or false specifications and it tests the sd card so this app detects fake devices that have modified firmware which conceals the real actual hardware specification of the device other device testing apps will usually fail to report the true specifications on fake devices because they only report what the operating system tells them which is fake specifications this may be the only app on the play store that will report true device specifications because we do not rely on what the operating system is reporting we find the true specs by running tests so as i just said this app actually detects the real specifications and uh, if you want to check the specifications of your android car stereo system and in this particular case I'm using the Woodman Robo X9. I have already installed it and let's just go ahead and open up the app. So at first we have the device screen resolution test and this says that the real device screen resolution is 1280 into 720p and the screen resolution reported by the device is 1280 into 720p. So this matches and this means the resolution reported by Woodman is accurate and it's not false. Following this you have Android operating system check. OS reported Android version is 10 and the Android version displayed by the device is also 10 so as you can see the Android version check it has passed the test and the API level feature test it has passed the test so this means the OS reported Android version and the API levels are accurate or correct so following this you have the internal storage space verification test and this too has also passed because as you can see it says free space verification test is passed the internal storage free space reporting is not being manipulated as storage space is being consumed you also have an external sd space verification test you have the linux kernel cpu information again this needs a specific test to be done so if you just drop down you can see the lookup cpu soc specs on the internet you can go ahead and do this test as well you have the cpu core performance test you have the ram information and in this as you can see android os reported total memory 1.92 gb android os reported free memory is 659 mb so this means there is a 2 gb of ram and currently free space is about 700 mb with 1.3 gb being consumed so if you install this fake device test app you can make sure that the woodman unit which you are having is not showing you any fake specs and you can be sure of the specs and the company from which you are buying it
so this is also one important thing which i wanted to share with you guys